for having me. It is a pleasure to have you here. We have a lot to get to this morning about the heroin problem in Anne Arundel County and the state of Maryland and actually nationally. Uh, and uh, we're going to talk about that and what you've been doing with the uh, heroin task force and what's coming up in the uh, in the not too distant future with with that and whatever else we can we can figure out. Good to have you here. Thanks again. Yeah. Uh, news this morning brought to you by McDonald's. Buy five medium or large hot McCafe beverages at McDonald's and get the six one free with the new McCafe rewards card. Enjoy a latte, mocha, hot coffee, or hot chocolate. I'm loving it at McDonald's. You're welcome, Jim. So apparently there's 21 people looking at this thing right now. Wow. County Executive, you can say hello or whatever. We're streaming live on this Twitter thing, trying to figure out this new little crazy little tool. Good morning, Twitter people. <laughs> can you... Can I and I'll hold that one. Okay. Say hi, Twitter people, to yeah. the man holding the... <laughs> Can you put a volume up there? Uh, I don't know. Is there a volume button over there? There is. There is. There is. Is that coming out? Headphones. Try these headphones. Maybe it's the headphones. Um, welcome to the quality range. I know we're just doing the uh, figuring it out. We're off air in commercials right now, but so we'll be quiet when they go on air live. Monday that the Washington Nationals will host the 2018 All-Star Game. Manfred made the announcement prior to the Nationals opener against the New York Mets at National Park. Improve your home with next day floors for a limited time. You can save up to half off of all flooring. Find the perfect floor for less in one of their six showrooms or by scheduling an at-home appointment. Visit nextdayfloors.net for more info. From the WRNI Newsroom, I'm Tammy. Conversation this morning will be about heroin, specifically in Anne Arundel County, with the Heroin Task Force. And then Thursday, cloudy skies, a spotty shower, high 56. This is Steve Williams reporting for AccuWeather.com on 1031 RNR and WRNR.com. Indian Creek School shapes their curriculum to challenge and support students to reach their highest potential academically. Their open house for lower and middle schools is tomorrow, April 8th, from 9 to 11 a.m. Details at IndianCreekSchool.org. Every spring, something amazing happens. Suddenly, you feel energized, inspired, and motivated to give the house a good cleaning. So go with that feeling and let Zip save you a tidy sum on cleaning your household items and more. While some dry cleaners charge Taking a break and going live in about four minutes again with the county executive. And we'll clean your duvet covers and blankets for $14.99 and pillow shams for just $3.99. With savings of 60% So which button should I push? leave other dry cleaners in the dust. We'll also dry clean and press any garment for just $1.99 using the same quality process as full price dry cleaners. And we'll always treat your items with care and attention. So crack open the windows, clean up the house, and get rid of the stuff you don't need, starting with overpriced dry cleaners. Zips Dry Cleaners. We clean clothes and more with a clean conscience. Visit one of Zips 39 locations or go to 321zips.com. Is your company always waiting for the right time to make a change in IT support, but the fear of the unknown is holding you back? Let Alpha Engineering Associates show you that any time is a good time with the right IT company. 
A reliable network is mission critical for a successful business, yet many companies, especially the ones not satisfied with their current arrangement or provider, are afraid to make a change. If this describes your business, then you need to talk to Alpha. They understand that time wasted is money lost. What would you spend to get reliable IT service? Luckily, you don't have to break the bank to get peace of mind and launch customer service. Because Alpha provides enterprise customers. Part of the blame, I think, really does go on the medical community because when they have, like somebody like me who's been long term on narcotic pain medicine. They don't quite understand when you stop it, the withdrawal as you are, the patient does go through. And I know each and every time. I've never been up to it, but I mean, you know, it takes a couple days to like feel good again. Yeah. When, yeah. I know about seven years ago I had my knee torn apart and they gave me Percocet and I was like, didn't know how my body was going to react to it and I that said no, I'll, chaos. I'll just like muscle through it, had one bad night and took one and that was about it, just, I mean I'm not into the drugs or anything but it was just the, the fear of how my body would react to it if I, yeah. you know, taking four a day or whatever well, it was. Well that's what you got to keep is that fear. I mean, it's, you know, uh, there was a show here, uh, not that long ago, but it was on HBO, uh, Deadwood, and it um, it really addressed the, back in the 18, 1870s, 1880s, and, and out west, you know, how many people were hooked on opium? Sorry. Yeah, yeah um, that Chinese workers would bring, you know, would bring and sell, and I mean, there's all, there's been a drug problem forever, yeah. no, no matter what. Yeah. My mom having the drug conversation with me, with me, which was kind of ahead of her time. She said, she said to me, she goes, you know, I know you tried pot, and I, you know, you know, I hope you don't do anything else, and especially heroin. Said to my mom, it was like 18. Um, you have to worry about that. I really don't like needles. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's a big impediment, but now it can be snorted. And, you know, yeah, I never knew that. The snorted, smoker. It's great that you guys are Um, did you kind of know about that going in, in the job? Yeah, it's it's one of many things that I became increasingly concerned about just over my years as a delegate, but mm -hmm. I didn't do anything about. Yeah. So the, the nice thing about this job is, you know, I, I have an agenda. It's been sort of built up over many years. I know what I want to do, and, uh, and this office has a lot of authority vested in it, so I can actually get things done. It's, it's been great. And all the, I guess, all the, the stuff over the last few years are behind us now. With uh, who is the county uh, executive? Oh, um, Leopold. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Every time I heard his name, I thought of the Bugs Bunny skit. Leopold. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm good that. <laughs> That's right, the cut, the yeah. pianist. It's Leopold. <laughs> <laughs> that was a great, that was a great Bugs Bunny. Yeah. Leopold. I apologize, my mind thinks in <coughs> usually cartoons. <laughs> that is really funny. Leopold, Leopold. <laughs> All right, stand by. Here we go. Hosier works on 1031 WRNR. It's 810. I am Mike Ondeko, and we are joined this morning by a some very special guest, County Commissioner, uh, County Executive. I want to call you Commissioner, and I don't know why that came out. County Executive Steve Shu. Good morning. Good morning once again. So, we all know now, um, well, we know here that uh, Anne Arundel County has a heroin problem. Uh, 
it's I think just starting to become top of mind awareness for a lot of folks who thought, well, we live in the suburbs, it's uh, it's not a problem. Uh, it's an inner city problem, and we're so we're starting to see that uh, that's changed quite a bit. Can you tell us what the county's uh, up to with that and the task force and and what your agenda is for addressing the heroin issue here in Anne Arundel County? Well, heroin is not today the heroin of our grandparents' era, where it was confined to gritty urban neighborhoods. Heroin is broken out into the wider community. It is everywhere in this county, north, south, east, west, and it's affecting every demographic, rich, poor, black, white, man, woman, everyone uh, can be affected by heroin. And at this point, uh, matters have reached a crisis proportion. We are currently experiencing an overdose a day from heroin and a fatality a week here in Anne Arundel County. An overdose a day? An overdose a day. What about the... To the uh, point where uh, these people are being found by uh, emergency medical personnel or police or fire and taken to the hospital. Wow. There may be many others beyond those that are identified through our professional uh, staffs. How readily available is heroin? I, as somebody who's never tried that, I, I've never gone out and looked for it, but from what I understand, it's easy to get, but... Well, unfortunately, it, it's very plentiful and it's cheap. That's the key, right? That's a big part of the problem. It has become so ubiquitous, it can be found anywhere. I've been told by high school kids that they can find a, a hit of heroin within five minutes, any time of the day or night, if they want to, which hopefully That's... the vast majority of them do not, but some of them fall prey to it. Uh, it is um, also being fueled by the, uh, the decrease in availability of prescription drugs. A lot of kids and young people, even older people, start with prescription drugs uh, from a doctor mm -hmm. for, for a very good reason, maybe a sports injury or, or an illness. You and, and I were, were talking off air. Uh, I've had a history of surgeries uh, because of hip problems and, and other joints. and uh, I've taken a lot of prescription narcotic pain medicine to get me through the day. Right. And uh, one thing I've always kept in the back of my mind is, I, I'm not going to abuse it. I, I can't abuse it. I may want to abuse it. <laughs> it sometimes is tempting to abuse, especially when you're feeling down and you're, and you're in pain. But uh, I can see how easily someone gets hooked. Well, it's very easy to get hooked on these drugs. They're very powerful opiates. They affect the uh, receptors deep down in the brain. Uh, they are our pleasure centers. And, and at some point, those prescription drugs run out and then the person feels the cravings. They may go to then acquiring those same drugs on the street, but they're extremely expensive. Oxycontin, others like that, can cost 70 or $80 a hit on wow. the street. Heroin is only $10 a hit. And, and so the economics of the matter can drive people in the direction of, of heroin. And that's part of why it has become so prevalent today, more than ever before, and as I mentioned, we're experiencing a, uh, an overdose a day, and that is double the number of overdoses from just two or three years ago. So this, this, this problem is doubling every handful of years. What's the game plan? How do we address the fact that there is an overdose a day and a fatality a week, and more and more people are getting hooked on the drug? I know that there's law enforcement, but what about from the other side of the, uh, of the coin? Well, law enforcement's part of it, but heroin is a multifaceted challenge. It, it is, I call it the octopus from hell because it reaches into every aspect of our lives. It is a healthcare challenge. It is a law enforcement challenge. It is an education challenge. Uh, it, is a, it is a PR challenge. And we have to come at it from all of those different directions. So our first step uh, in county government was to form a task force that drew on each relevant department of county government, police, fire, health, education, sheriff's office, social services, many others. And that task force reviewed all of our existing programs to combat heroin 
made recommendations on how to beef up those existing programs and recommended a whole range of new programs that we can pursue to fight heroin. We are now in the implementation phase. We are beefing up law enforcement. We are providing more treatment alternatives today than we have before. And most importantly, we are stepping up our game when it comes to educating our young people and the general public about the dangers of heroin. Ultimately, this is an educational issue and the solution is in education because once a person has been arrested for uh, possession uh, or has been found by uh, a paramedic in an overdose situation, it's too late. They're already stuck in the grips of heroin addiction. We have to get to people before they get hooked. We're here with County Executive uh, Steve Shu from Anne Arundel County and there was a um, a town hall meeting uh, a couple weeks back at Anne Arundel Community College. Are there plans for more of those uh, situations that I didn't get to attend but I did get to watch the stream and it was very interesting to hear the personal stories of some of the folks that have been addressed uh, or that, uh, that have been affected by heroin. The town hall was actually quite an incredible event. 400 people attended. We had a panel discussion of experts in the field as well as uh, a couple dozen service providers who were there to uh, connect with attendees and help them with any aspect of their addiction problems or problems that their family members are having with addiction. The event itself was, uh, was, was very encouraging because so many people did turn out. And it tells me that we're all as a community starting to wake up and, and realize the threat that this drug presents to our community. On the other hand, it was, it was a very, uh, it, it, I, want to, I don't know the right word, it, it just, it, there was a certain sadness to the event because there mm -hmm. was so much suffering in the room. It, it's, a, it's, a, it's not just about numbers, I mean this, this problem is about real people with real problems. And so many people came up to the microphone and shared their story of a, of a lost child or a lost brother or sister. It was just absolutely heartbreaking, but it was on the other hand so positive that they were willing to come forward and share their story so that maybe others will, will heed take heed and, and, and take this seriously. Are there any plans for any future? Yes, we're gonna be doing several more events, so I would certainly encourage your your listeners to stand by. We'll make announcements on WRNR and other places. And by the way, I wanna just thank the, the staff and owners of WRNR for the leadership they've shown on this issue. They're, they're, you guys are part of the fight against heroin, and I appreciate it. Is there a website that the county has set aside or a place that, uh, a clearinghouse of information that we can go to, to look up information, to maybe ask some questions, to, to get some help, or if uh, we have a family member who's involved in heroin, that we can get them some help. Yes, we have a crisis hotline. It's available 24 hours a day, seven days a week. The number is 410-768-5522. Again, 410-768-5522. Uh, that's the county line. There's also the Maryland Youth Crisis Hotline. 800-422-0009. Again, 800-422-0009. Very good. We will uh, we'll get those numbers out to everybody in case you missed it or you're driving and you can't write it down, we'll make sure that they're, they're posted up on our website so that, uh, so that everybody can, can get involved. And County Executive, I know you are very busy with budget stuff and you know all the fun things that go along with being a County Executive. We appreciate you taking time to come in here and talk a little bit about the issue of uh, what's going on. And we invite you back anytime you would like to come on in and, and hang for a little bit. Well, I'm glad, glad to, and uh, this is a lot more important than budgets. Yeah, yeah, it is. It's people's lives. This is real people. County Executive Steve Shu here on 1031 RNR. We'll be back. We'll get to some in excess next.